Cairo, Egypt has some of the most beautiful mosques in the world, and that's one of the reasons we use several of them at the beginning of the series, because they so beautifully show how architecture can be used to glorify God. This is the beautiful mosque of Sultan Hassan in Cairo. It's known for its monumental dimensions and opulent decoration, much of it carried out by uh, craftsmen who were brought from Syria and Iran. Often when filming these mosques, we put a human figure in the shot in order to give it scale to show how grand the place is. Here we're using a jib and a very wide lens to take in this whole uh, tremendous space. The open courtyard here has many hanging lamps, quite beautiful, opening to the sky. This is the mosque of Ibn Tulun. It's, it's a much older construction. Uh, the spiral minaret was actually uh, modeled on one from Iraq in Samarra. You can see here the simplicity, the geometric simplicity in this shot taken from the minaret. This is a minbar which serves as a pulpit would in a Christian church. You can see the grand scale of the architecture here in the Ibn Falun Mosque, here back in Sultan Hassan. Arabic calligraphy was an important decorative element, often in gold, as we see here. In Tunisia, the great water basins in Karawan were originally Roman. The Muslims restored them and provided running water for the citizens of Karawan. Here we've placed a camel beside them to give a sense of scale. I think the camel cost us about $7 for the day's rental. Here's the open courtyard of the great mosque of Karawan. It's a very early 8th century mosque. Again, very great in scale. The square minaret is probably a remnant from the original 8th century mosque, later rebuilt. This is the, the great mosque of Damascus, the earliest surviving monumental mosque in the Islamic world. It was the first mosque to have minarets and was converted from a Christian church of St. John. Uh, it became the architectural model for mosques uh, all around the world and eventually was given a shrine to the head of John the Baptist. Here we're inside the great Suleymaniye Mosque built for the Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent in the 16th century. The Ottoman architect Sinan's greatest work, really the finest example. Islamic architects uh, really perfected the difficult task of dome building, and the Ottoman mosques had some of the finest domes of all. The domes were often topped off the beautiful gold ornament, sometimes with the symbolic gold crescents at the very end. Here we see the Hagia Sophia, once a great church, and uh, became a mosque with the conquest of Constantinople by Mehmet, the great Ottoman Sultan. It was originally built by the Byzantine Emperor in the 5th century. Here again, the great architect Sinan used it as a model for the, for the Suleymaniye. The interior spaces are magnificent. It was originally the largest enclosed space in the world. In Syria, there's an example of the, of the early um, water technology that the Muslims were so adept at. These are huge water wheels which use the power of the river to lift the water using only the power of the river over 50 feet to the stone aqueducts above where it's then of course channeled to the fields.
This is the beautiful Alhambra in, in Granada, Spain, the oldest surviving example of a medieval palace. When we see it now in its restored state, it's hard to believe that by the 19th century it had fallen into almost complete ruin and was being inhabited by gypsies. When it was discovered and written about by the American Washington Irving, uh, it became a romantic tourist attraction for Westerners uh, even before it was restored. It's a magnificent example of detail in its fine craftswork. Throughout the Alhambra are, are gravity-fed uh, fountains and pools. And, and we find pools like this feeding gardens throughout the Islamic world. The images of, of greenery and water were very important uh, and, and are used in the Quran in images of paradise. The Islamic gardens were some of the most beautiful in the world. In Cordoba in Spain, is the, in the center of town, is a great Catholic cathedral with a towering bell spire, which was once a minaret because the great Catholic cathedral here was actually once a mosque. It was built, as many early mosques were, with ancient Greek and Roman columns salvaged from the ruins around them. The columns were often too short so that they stacked them one on top of each other and connected them with arches. It almost has the effect of a sheltering forest of trees. We can still see the Romanesque ceiling of the church and arches melding together with the mosque architecture. The Dome of the Rock is, is one of the most beautiful monuments in, in all of Islam. And uh, it's important to Muslims because it was believed it was uh, from here that Muhammad ascended to heaven after a journey from Mecca on his magic horse and while in heaven met with all the prophets, including Moses and Jesus, whom he led in prayer before returning to earth and traveling back to Mecca. In Tunisia, the, the rabats, or fortresses by the sea, are made of stone and brick and were used to protect the, the inhabitants from uh, Berber pirates and also from Vikings. There were massive stone fortresses, often, often with a mosque attached, right by the shore of the beautiful Mediterranean. The Palace of Forty Columns in Isfahan, Iran, is one of the most beautiful buildings in Islamic architecture. Actually, it has only 20 columns, but when reflected in its pool, uh, it appears to have 40. It's a great Safavid monument and once the facade was covered with mirrored tiles. Iran is filled with beautiful mosques and monuments, many covered with beautiful tile work. The great mosque of Yads was built by the Mongols who converted to Islam, and it's covered in the inside and out with ceramic tile with interlocking designs. Here we can see the, the indentation on the wall, which is called a mirab, which points towards Mecca and gives those who are praying there a direction in which to direct their prayers. Here we can see how, how intricate and beautiful this interlocking tile work is. The decoration is just fabulous. This is a prayer hall, uh, also a Mongol mosque, built for the ruler uh, Ujaitu. Uh, it contains a beautiful carved wooden minbar and a mirab. Minbar, of course, is uh, like a pulpit in a Christian church. <laughs> In uh, Isfahan, also in, in Iran, is the beautiful mosque of Sheikh Lutfala. Again, beautifully covered in, in uh, tile work. Uh, 
Two of its most outstanding features are the surface pattern and colored tiles which come to full flower in the 16th and 17th century. And the quality of light which comes in through the double grills around the dome is very beautiful. Here we've added some smoke to the interior of the space so that we can accentuate the shafts of sunlight. <laughs> 